Welcome, Janine, and thank you for giving your time today so we can talk about one of the areas of your election platform that's very important and talk about the issues related to the crisis in the arts at the moment. But before we start, we probably should acknowledge that the land we're on, um, the custodians of the land we're on are by the Darragal people and the Darug people and pay our respects to them and their elders past, present and becoming. And I can just imagine that on this land we're on here, somewhere in 50,000 years, there's probably been someone playing a didgeridoo, someone playing clapping sticks, maybe a corroboree, or maybe someone doing hand paintings on caves. Um, and of course, the policy to do with the arts is really important in terms of Bradfield, isn't it? The fact that we have as our sitting member for Bradfield, Paul Fletcher, the supposed minister of the arts, and he certainly seems to have been missing in action a lot of the time um, and not supporting them in the way we would have thought. You know, a recent article by um, Alison Krogan in the Saturday paper basically argues that the Morrison government, and particularly Paul Fletcher and the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, have continued a concentrated campaign to try and destroy the arts that the coalition governments have been doing for a long, long time. What, what's your response to that? Look, I'm very proud of my education. I did a Bachelor of Arts degree and I majored in Australian literature and Australian history. I majored in the humanities. And that's been a driving force in my life because it's taught me critical thinking and the possibilities of imagination, the possibilities of imagining a better world. And I think that is the heart of what an arts education is. I've also been a teacher of the arts in the sense that I was an English and history teacher. And basically that is about promoting story. It's about promoting drama, literature, and getting children to enjoy these wonderful, um, wonderful stories that emanate, that go back to Aboriginal culture, right. the oral culture of people mm -hmm. telling stories. So, and then on a personal level, I've been so interested in the performance aspect of myself as a teacher, mm -hmm. because teaching in its heart is a performance act. You have a class, they're an audience, and you've got to engage them, you've got to move them, you've got to take them. And that's a very skilled thing that I, as a professional teacher, has had to learn over a long time of my mm. career. And so I've just been very enriched by having a... Um, where I've had to learn a few things. For example, I do a little bit of painting. And I know when I'm painting, there's another part of my brain working that mm -hmm. kind of just releases me wow. and things. So teaching for me has been an incredibly creative profession. And, and that's why I can understand why the arts are so important. And you've also done a little bit of acting, haven't you? I have. And um, I was uh, in my uh, secondary teaching career, I was very proud of that, but then I discovered that young people, oh my goodness, their imagination, their creativity is so profound. And I wanted to go and become a primary school teacher. And so I enrolled in a clown course. I know we don't talk about clowns in Canberra. That's not really the appropriate thing to say, but I have done, been done some clown work. And that was absolutely um, just um, fantastic because you could see how children their brains worked, how mm. they opened up to their imagination and how their language improved. It was a really great experience. Well, let's go back to the crisis in the arts and, and I'll come back to that point that Alison Krogan wrote about, which is this sort of absolute attack on the arts by coalition governments. I mean, why do you, why do you think that's there? Why are they so against the arts? Well, look, I'm going to summarise it a little bit and say there's a lot of anti-intellectualism that unfortunately this government is pursuing. They don't value the arts because they are concerned that it will make people think mm -hmm. and challenge that authority. But we need really wholesome people who have got 
who are alert and can use that creative um, ideas to really challenge some of the nonsense that mm -hmm. goes on. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I mean, it's really interesting. I've just finished reading um, Sean Kelly's book. And, and what Sean Kelly says in that book is that the picture that Morrison has of Australia and the, the picture that he's tried to enforce during being Prime Minister is this very one-dimensional, flat, uh, you know, picture of, of Australia, a simple Australia, where in fact, uh, you know, everything is pretty good and we, we shouldn't be complaining about it, you know, because the quiet Australians think it's all good. And yet arts does exactly the opposite of that, doesn't it? Arts creates a sense of complexity. This is the problem, as you just said, is that we want to say uh, it's either this or that. It's either environment or jobs. It's not like that. It's about, it's much more complicated than that. And, um, and I think the arts really open us to the sense that we can talk about a lot of other things, such as homelessness such as deaths in custody and refugees and the growing divide between the mm -hmm. rich and the poor and so on. And it also, it, it also opens our imagination, doesn't it? And, and it connects us with our, our feeling bodies and, 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 and our being rather than just you know, our brains in lots of ways. Absolutely. And that's really where we're really in a problem is that we are not going for the vision, the big picture issues. Mm. And um, in, as part of my studies as an educator, I really did a lot of research in, unless you can have emotions and cognitive working together, you are not going to really go for, forward to really big thinking ideas. Right. And so w what's happened then is, is that Morrison, you know, the, the whole attack on the arts really began in lots of ways with John Howard. And then it's just continued. And Morrison has continued that sort of attack because the arts actually are exactly the opposite of the world that he's created for us. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, one of the big things is, um, I guess it, when we're talking about that, goes to funding. And it really goes back to 2016 mm -hmm. with um, George Brandis, mm -hmm. who really was using a strategy to control funding and who received it and who didn't. Mm. And instead of having um, the funding uh, through peer assessed recommendations of the Independent Australian Council, mm. Brandis took 105 million of that council's discretionary budget and allocated, um, <laughs> allocated it to the elite, to acceptable, you know, non-confrontational commercial arts and right. companies. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, and Fletcher has actually continued that, hasn't he? As, as we're going to see. I mean, what he did was out of the 220 million that was allocated in the RISE grants, um, he actually took all that the 20 million that was part of that for the arts, he took that to himself and carried on exactly the sort of same thing that Brandis has done. And so what happened was exactly the same, that it was the not-for-profit, the small arts companies that in fact missed out because of what he did. Hmm. Mr Fletcher, what experience does he have on knowing which arts groups to fund? And one of the things is, again, it's like it's his pot of money and he's making the choices. And he does not have the expertise to do it. And as you say, he wants arts to make money. Well, mm. arts is not about making money. It's about thinking of ideas, challenging new ways of thinking. And, um, and that's what we should be doing. Yeah, you're dead right, aren't you? I mean, what, what he wanted to do was use the money that was set aside for the arts to actually lead an economic recovery. And so therefore, the, the, the sort of things that he funded were the large um, events that in fact uh, he thought was, was going to make money in the economy. Mm. That's right, but art isn't really about that. Art is really asking us to really deeply consider really you know, fundamental questions about challenging um, the way the world is. Um, and those things don't actually make money, they're actually core 
thinking qualities that make a strong civil and society based on well-being. Right, yeah. Well, look, before we look at the, at the actual budget items themselves, what about if we have a look at what the arts does in the Australian economy? Because I think that's important for people to understand before we actually then start to look at the funding that's been given. And I think that's a really good question, David, because the arts are a multi-billion dollar industry. They provide $111 billion to the economy, over 6% of Australia's gross domestic policy. 876,000 people, or 8% of the Australian workforce, are employed in the arts. And one of the most interesting things is that there are more people working in the arts than there are in mining. That's right. And when mm. you talk about that, that just blows out this whole um, discussion we're having yeah. currently to say, oh, we're so worried about jobs in the fossil fuel. Of course we are concerned about those. But we are talking about a really important part of our economy, mm. our artists, our musicians. Yeah. And, and they're just almost like not even mentioned. Well, I read a really interesting thing the other day where one of the bureaucrats actually said the funding for arts is a rounding error in the budget. In other words, it's an afterthought that comes last, a little bit like the ministry that Paul Fletcher runs, where we've got infrastructure, we've got regional um, development and so on, and the arts is the last little bit that's tacked on at the end, sort of like an afterthought. And I think this is a really serious issue about the future of Australia that we are just tacking it on as something that is not really very important, mm. it's inconsequential, oh, we'll just do a little bit of arts here. No, it's been so destroyed, so defunded, we really need to say we will lose our moral compass, we will lose our, you know, what is it, what does it mean to be an Australian if we continue this hostile uh, agenda for the arts? Well, that's true, because you might remember that Kerry O'Brien, when we did the webinar with Kerry O'Brien and the ABC, he actually said the arts are the soul of Australia and that, and that what the arts do is they actually create, they reflect, they develop, and most importantly, they critique our arts, our, our world and the world we've created. And, and so maybe one day, when we spend as much money on the arts as we do on fossil fuel, we might re rediscover our soul in Australia. Mm. And I might just say that's probably why, again, um, the coalition government is so hostile to the ABC. That's right. Because the ABC is about telling stories. It is about arts. Yeah. And the arts do critique. And uh, you must never upset the uh, government. That's what it sounds like we're ha going into a, a Chinese sort of view of what our media is all about. I think it's really important to just see the disdain that the Morrison government and the and Frydenberg budget has shown to the arts um, because of this. Um, and, and the way in which, you know, as Crogan said, it just once again continues that that attack on the arts. So what's the first thing that we want to look at in terms of the budget allocation, Janine? Well, in the 2022-23 budget, the attitude is, well, the arts were supported through um, lockdowns and now they can stand on their own feet again. So even though there is one more round of 20 million for the rise for the arts, any support like that will cease at the end of June 2023. Apart from the extra rise money, the budget includes four other main items. Mm -hmm. Firstly, 316 million to build an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultural centre, which is an initiative that we really do applaud, but I'm not quite sure why it's located in, in Canberra. Canberra. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, secondly, uh, 9.3 million over two years for the National Museum, again located in Canberra, um, to remedy the impacts of COVID. 
9 million to support independent cinemas affected by COVID. And um, I believe Mr. Fletcher has recently reported 61,000 um, uh, received by Rosal Cinema, which is a great thing for Bradfield. But I just don't know why he's not thinking about the Marin Street Theatre. Marin Theater Street Theatre, exactly. Yes. They never have any money for that. No. Uh, which is a really important um, yeah. theatre for young people, anyway. And an extension of government insurance to June 22 to screen projects affected by COVID, some of which are probably being made by companies outside of Australia and where the profits, profits. will go. Yeah. Yeah. The budget forecasts significant reductions in funding to many arts companies and organisations out to 2025 to 26. Again, as you say, it is the arts, it is culture, it is the soul of Australia that are the big losers in this budget. Well, let's have a look at the arts and cultural development. What about that as, as one of the main areas? Well, this received $159 million dollars. In the current budget, that is reduced to twenty million dollars. Twenty million. Yeah, so there's been a big cut, and twenty three to twenty four, they will receive two point four million. Wow. So that is a massive loss of support. I agree. And some medium and small arts companies, they just won't recover. Recover. Yep, I I agree. What about music, um, Janice? Uh, Janine, <laughs> there's um, very little opportunity for musical performances, you know. I mean, the number of concerts that were cancelled, I, I lost two concerts I was supposed to go to and I don't know how many other things. Um, how much money is music received in the budget? In the 2021-22 budget, $6.4 million was provided to support Contemporary music. Well, I don't know quite, quite I, what I'm that not means. sure either. Um, and musicians um, who fitted into that criteria. That funding will continue in 23 to 20, 22 to 23, but funding will cease completely in 2024. Right. The assumption is that Australian music and singers and um, yep, performers, musicians, performers yeah will be able to exist with no support from government from 2024 onwards. While this may be true for some of the major music companies and well-known bands and mm -hmm. musicians, this is just absolutely absurd for the large majority of regional and community bands mm -hmm. and orchestras. Yep. Funding to support Australian music and musicians should be an item in the federal government budget. Yeah, every budget, in fact. Yeah. And what's really interesting, you know, is it's very different to the way in which Ireland is setting up its economic recovery, isn't it? It's, it's so amazing what the Irish government is doing. They're very clearly committed to sustaining Irish art, music, dance and stage performance after COVID. Mm -hmm. They've just announced 28 million to go to 2,000 performers and venues. Each performer mm. is going to receive an equivalent of $400 a week for three years. That's amazing. Mm. Venues can apply for an equivalent $10,000. Wow. A significant different view of the arts and the importance of the arts in the culture of Ireland than our governments in Australia are doing. Yeah. I mean, what they're really doing is they're providing a living wage, aren't they, to, to musicians and performers. And, and I mean, it seems to me that might have been a very much more effective way towards economic recovery using the arts and the way in which Fletcher actually uh, tried to organise it. Well, I noticed that during lockdown, for example, I'm a, I'm a great lover of the ABC, but I did get a bit sick and tired of the repeats that were coming up all the time. I mean, how did they fare in, in this budget? Well, I just have to say that's why the ABC needs more funding to produce more excellent um, TV and film. Mm. 
Under the budget heading of film and television in 21 to 22, there was funding of 195 million. In the 2022-23 budget, this has been reduced by 45 million. Further, Screen Australia, the organisation that very often appears in the credits of Australian produced films and television programs and series has had its funding cut by $11 million in 2022 to 23. And in the next budget, 2023 to 24, it will be reduced to less than half of this, less than $12 million. So I wouldn't be expecting a dramatic rise in quality television in the next few years. Ah, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, well, look, there are two other really important areas of the arts we haven't talked about. One is the literary arts, our, our writers, our historical chronicles, our poets, um, and, and the other main one, of course, is dance, which is what tells a lot of our cultural stories. How have they fared in Frydenberg's budget? Well, as far as I could tell from the budget papers and media commentators, neither of those two arts appear in the budget papers at all. Goodness me. The other day I heard, right, this just shows you how we, how we think about our literary people, that someone in Australia who's a novelist earns maybe up to $18,000 a year, not even a living wage. I mean, it sort of recalls the notion of the, of the writer sitting up at midnight with a candle and a pen uh, in a tiny garret on, on, on the top of a, of a floor somewhere, doesn't it? And that's not very good news for either the literary arts or the dancing, uh, dancing fraternity at all. Um, and what about the community and, and the regional base? They don't seem to have done um, terribly well at all. Uh, that's a good question. And I can tell you that the Regional Arts Fund the fund that is most likely to support the organisations that you have just identified mm. has suffered one of the biggest cuts of all. Uh. From 18 million in 2021 to 22 to 7.5 million Goodness in me. 2022 to 23. And that amount remains the same until 25 to 26. This is a sharp contrast, contrast to the huge amount of money that has been identified in the budget for regional development, yep. particularly to support mining and other fossil fuel related projects, but apparently not for the arts. Okay. And obviously one of the ways to sustain the arts, of course, is, is funding to be able to train artists and performers and actors and so on. Um, what sort of money is there in the budget for education and training in the arts? Um, nothing really. There doesn't seem to be any allocation in money for the arts directed to training and education. But, well, but just imagine what arts in Australia could be with just a quarter of the funds that now go to subsidise fossil oh, fuels. Absolutely, I agree. Well, you've painted a, a pretty gloomy picture regarding funding for the support for the arts. And there's one more budget item that we should look at, which we have mentioned a little bit already, the Australia Council, which is the most important panel of, of, of professionals who peer review the grant applications in the arts. Um, how's the Australia Council fared in all of it? Well, on paper, its funding doesn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. In 21 to 22, it received nearly 220 million and its funding remains the same for 2022 to 23 mm -hmm. and increases by about 3 million each year until 26. Right. However, the increase just about is the same as the predicted rise in inflation. Right. So really there's no increase at all. Mm. And it will depend on how much of that Fletcher quarantines to his own personal decisions. Absolutely, absolutely. In addition to all this, 
some of our most important cultural institutions already under pressure trying to preserve our cultural heritage mm -hmm. are also facing significant cuts. So what are they? The National Gallery of Australia has lost four million in the 2022-23 budget. Mm -hmm. The National Library of Australia will lose 14 million by 24. And the budget allocated to collections will be halved by 24. That's really a double whammy, because what we're talking about is a loss not only to the institutions, but the collections, of course, that are absolutely critical to those institutions to be able to survive. That's right. Well, the National Film and Sound Archives, their base budget has declined about 20% over the last decade, mm -hmm. while its task has grown larger. So to restore the budget to the previous level will require an increase of six million dollars to the base, irrespective of additional short-term project funding. Right. Well, look, thank you for being here today and helping us to understand what is a pretty dismal picture in terms of the way the arts are gonna be supported for the next two years. And um, I just hope that, you know, anyone who is a lover of literature, a lover of music, a lover of stage theatre would be absolutely crazy to vote for the Merison, Morrison government or Paul Fletcher. I mean, they're the ones that obviously are responsible for this disastrous crisis that they've, they've created um, in the arts. Uh, and as someone once said, the day we spend as much money supporting the arts as we do in fossil fuel subsidies, then maybe we'll have a, a thriving arts culture that will, that will re-establish the soul of Australia. And so I just want to thank you so much for being here today and, and helping us um, to understand that. Thank you, David. Authorised by Janine Kitson, Suite 1A, Level 2, 802 Pacific Highway, New South Wales, Gordon 2072.